Hey everybody and welcome to Breaking Biotech, everybody's favorite biotech podcast. My name is Matt and thanks so much for coming in today. If you like what I'm doing, please like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. And if you're on YouTube, hit the notification bell so you know when I'm putting out videos. And for anybody who's just listening only, uh, you're really missing out. I uh, get into a lot of stuff on the actual screen, so I encourage you to switch over to YouTube once in a while if you're interested. But um, yeah, so today, everybody, I want to talk about Amarin. And uh, I it's been a couple weeks, almost a couple weeks since I put out a video, but i uh, been busy. But I managed to get some time yesterday to look into the details of their their latest CVOT trial. And I think it's important that we talk about it because I was alluding to this with my Aspirion video because they might have to do a CVOT as well. So I think this is a good um, look into the process. And uh, it's also relevant for our discussion on what actually leads to negative cardiovascular outcomes. And Amarin is, is one side of the puzzle that I've touched on a little bit with uh, Ionis because they've looked at reducing triglycerides, but uh, mostly it's through reducing LDLC that we talk about it in the context of improving um, major cardio- cardiovascular adverse events. So uh, yeah, so going to get into it. Not going to do a roundup of my uh, portfolio. I just haven't had a chance, but uh, last week was pretty good, and uh, I'm recording this on early on Monday, and, you know, things are, are going, uh, nothing too crazy to report. Anyway, so let's get into it. So Amarin, for those who don't know, it was uh, before last Monday, before the data dropped, uh, it was trading around 3 bucks, had a $1 billion market cap, and then they released the data from their uh, Vesipa cardiovascular outcome study called Reduce It. And the stock shot up quickly to 12, and now as I'm recording this, it's trading at around 18. And the reason why it's trading so high is because the results were extremely positive in this cardiovascular outcome study. So what they saw was a uh, was a 25% um, improvement in relative risk reduction. So 25% relative risk reduction, which is insanely high. Um, for some for some reference, I'll, I'll talk a little bit later, but um, this is a very, very positive result for them. It's a, it's a larger risk reduction than any of the uh, PCSK9 inhibitor uh, CVOT trials. So it's, you know, it, it plan, it's likely to generate a lot of revenue for the company. So the drug itself is actually a concentrated amount of EPA, which is one of the fish oil fatty acids. And uh, the fish oils have been um, studied, but not to this extent. So usually it's been a combination of EPA and DHA, or it's been a lower dose of both. And DHA has been associated with increasing um, LDL-C cholesterol, whereas EPA doesn't have that negative effect, and it's also involved, or it's been shown to lead to a reduction in triglycerides. So Amarin has had the um, indication for people with triglycerides in the levels of 500 um, milligram per deciliter or higher for for quite some time now, but the FDA required them to do a large-scale CVOT to see if it improved um, MACE events, major adverse cardiovascular events in people that had uh, triglycerides between 150 and 500 milligram per deciliter. So they, uh, they underwent this trial. It started in 2011, I believe, and uh, it's just a huge study. So over 8,000 patients that were on statins already um, is, is who they looked into. And then they, you know, they split the two groups into um, a treatment. I'll show it here on their, on their thing. A treatment group and a control group that was taking four grams of Vesipa daily. And um, then they followed up with them and, and saw what was up. And it looks like the Vesipa group had 25% re- reduction in the number of these MACE events. So pretty, pretty substantial. And it took five years to get all of these people um, followed up with. So or the follow up uh, time was five years after they started. So um, pretty substantial. And, uh, and the reason for this is because so many patients have um, are already on statins, but they still have an increased risk of MACE events, even though they're they have normalized LDLC. So that's really the crux here when we're when we're trying to figure out, you know, what leads to these um, adverse events, and they they break it down a little bit in their trial, um, and they also allude to a paper. 
Okay, I don't have it here. I'll, uh, I'll link it in the in the notes below. But they had a really good paper that summarizes uh, what's been going on with trying to really take that um, risk that's associated with uh, having high cholesterol and high triglycerides in your blood and trying to bring that to zero. And so statins came along and they were able to reduce that by a significant amount. Um, and, that, and then it, there was some controversy on whether or not you needed to get your cholesterol to around like 50 uh, milligram per deciliter or if it was okay in the 70s or something. So when the PCSK9 inhibitors came around, the FDA required them to do the CVOT to see, you know, statins do okay. They bring your, your cholesterol, your LDLC to around, you know, 70 to 100. But if it goes down to like 50, do you get added risk reduction? And the PCSK9 inhibitors did show, in fact, that you get a 15% improvement. So, but that's not the same as uh, the normal healthy population, right? So there's still some added risk associated with having um, these blood lipid profiles that are that are not normal. And so it seems like reducing your cholesterol is also important in bringing your risk normal to, in normalizing your risk to the normal population. Uh, this has been relatively controversial, though, because a lot of trials that looked at reducing triglycerides showed no added risk reduction. So uh, I wrote down a few here, and if you look at the paper, the review that I'm going to link, uh, it goes into a lot of great detail. But um, niacin and phenofibrates, phenofibrate actually did not show an, in, an improvement in relative risk reduction. But gemfibrozole, which is another type of fibrate, did show an improvement in risk reduction. So uh, so it's it's a little controversial, and some of the omega threes were were relatively controversial too in their data. But I think what we're starting to to see here is that um, with this study now, and there's another study that was done in Japan that showed that uh, concentrated EPA reduces triglycerides by about thirty percent. I think uh, so. I think in thirty percent with people with really really high triglycerides, and then twenty percent in people that were were on statins, so they had a relatively well controlled. Uh, triglycerides, so between like 200 and 500. So relatively well controlled. I don't mean they're that they're normal, but they uh, they weren't above 500. So it seems like being able to reduce LDLC and reduce triglycerides is really the best that you can hope for when it comes to trying to improve your risk. So when we look at uh, the companies that I've been involved with, uh, the, a lot of them only look at reducing LDLC. So Ionis and Axia are a special case, and their indication is only looking at patients that have um, above a triglyceride of above 500 uh, milligram per deciliter. So they're they're in kind of a special group, and I don't know if, if it's worth considering um, them to be a competitor to Amarin necessarily because they've already been kind of competitors. But um, Esperion dropped on the news of the... Uh, the reduce it trial that came out last Monday and they've recovered a lot since then. Um, but I almost think they're in different leagues because they, they're really com competing with things like PCSK nine inhibitors to get their, uh, patients to have well controlled LDLCs like well below 70. Whereas Amarin is already looking at patients that have a controlled, uh, LDLC. So the median baseline of their patients was 75 milligram per deciliter. So not, not bad really. And um, so they're seeing whether or not the, the triglyceride reduction is really what's going to move the needle forward. So um, I don't think they're direct competitors, but I do see that Amarin has a crazy amount of potential moving forward. So I just want to make sure I covered everything. Yeah, so I mentioned already that the, um, the PCSK9 inhibitor uh, CVOTs, they, they had a relative risk reduction of 15%. So with Aspirion, um, their, their target group really is a lot of uh, patients that are on maximally tolerated statins and who are statin resistant, so they, they don't respond to statins very well. So in these patients, they need a lot. They're, they're trying to look for other ways to get that LDLC lowered because that's still the, the gold standard in terms of trying to reduce your risk of cardiovascular events. Um, although with this new data, there might be a frame shift a little bit with cardiologists because uh, that be just because of how good the result is. So when it comes to um, Esperion, they're trying to get their patients um, much lower in in LDLC, and they're not really 
looking at triglycerides as much. Um, so, you know, moving forward, we need to think about how, how the doctor is really going to consider this. And they're also going to look at the cost. So the, the cost of this uh, EPA Vasipa is very, it's really inexpensive. And because it's been on the market for so long, they uh, they probably they they know what to expect in terms of the side effects and the risks associated with it, and it's not very significant. So I think uh, it's going to be easy for doctors to prescribe this. So I really think that Amarin has a really bright future ahead, um, given given this amazing data. So what else? Yeah. So if we look at their their price, so people are a lot of people on Twitter, at least were were a little bit nervous. Um, because they had bought in in the threes and uh you know in the middle of last week it was trading around 14 so they're already like almost 5x their their money and uh you know should they should they hold or should they get out but i did some quick uh back of the we'll say back of the napkin math here to figure out whether or not it's a, it's a justified price and so if we just look at prescriptions and so in 2017 they had 1.5 million prescriptions which was almost 200 million in revenue, and uh, their market cap was about 1 billion. So, based on their their closing price on Friday, it was about 16.3. They're trading now almost at 18, which I'm not surprised by, but market cap of almost 5 billion. Um, and so, if if they anticipate to double that prescription to um, 3 million, they they'll generate around 360 million in revenue, and uh, that's where we're at today. But you know the the price of this closing on last Friday is based on the anticipated amount of new prescriptions that they're going to have in 2019 moving forward. So, if they generate enough revenue that will cover half of the statin patients, so the number of patients that are on statins right now is 38 million, and if they reach half of those patients, we're looking at around 19 million prescriptions. That's probably two and a quarter billion worth of revenue and I uh, come up with a share price of about 44 with a market cap of 13 billion and of course if if you look at all the patients that are that have a triglyceride level of between of over 150 milligram per deciliter you're looking at around 50 million prescriptions and a share price of maybe around 100 so this is like a pipe dream right this is super far down the road there, there's a lot of things that need to, to happen that's right with Amarin, but you know, there's a lot of patients that could take this drug and, and see a benefit from it. So I think um, as the, the rollout goes forward and on their presentation, they talk about some, some near-term catalysts. So I think in early 2019, they're going to apply for the supplemental NDA. Yeah, so right here. So there's going to be new results that come out at the November AHA uh, meeting, so you can look for that, and we're going to see really how much of an effect the Vasipa had on lowering triglycerides, which is super important. So this might lead to another um, move in the stock. Uh, yeah. So and then the publication. So if they're able to publish it before the end of the year, we'll be able to see some more details there. And um, yeah. So the NDA is really what we care about in terms of how quickly they can do that, because there is a competitor to them which is um, AstraZeneca product, and I think they're going to get a readout of their data in 2019. So that that's going to be something to, to look out for. If they see competition, they're obviously not going to get anywhere near this amount of prescriptions. So this max revenue is really like a very, very, very much a pipe dream. But, you know, if they can reach half statin patients, I, I don't, there, there's a, there's a, a world in which that is true, whether it happens in 2019 or you know, it takes a few years, that might be true as well, but there's no doubt that this could, could really be a blockbuster. So, yeah, so other than that, um, oh, plaque progression, that's, uh, that's interesting. That'll be pretty cool, too, to see how, to, if it actually has an effect on um, shrinking the size of uh, atherosclerotic plaques in, in people. But uh, yeah, so these are the catalysts that uh, I'm going to be looking for. I, uh, I don't have a position. I haven't bought any yet. Um, you know, I'm looking at it because it's, uh, it's obviously got a ton of potential and um, it's, a, it's a pretty, pretty uh, substantial result that they got here. So we'll see. I'll, I'll post on Twitter if I, if I do buy any. But um, yeah, that's it. And uh, so I'm not, uh, I'm not changing my Spirion position. I think they're still a solid, like I'm still holding them. 
I think they still are, uh, their price is hammered down more than it should given the, uh, given the news that we've seen, but, um, yeah, Ameren, pretty, uh, pretty cool. So otherwise, I uh, didn't do too many trades last week. I, uh, I bought some Viking. I scaled in a little more when it uh, went into the 17s, I think, on Friday. I, uh, I haven't spent too much time looking at the charts this morning. But um, yeah, so I want to thank you guys all for watching. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And um, leave me a review anywhere, iTunes or YouTube. And uh, going to wrap it up. And we'll talk to you next time.